What's up, everybody? Sadeep Tuma back here with another NBA Draft Player Breakdown. This time we'll be looking at Johnny Davis, the Wisconsin shooting guard who's having a terrific sophomore season. Great decision for him to come back. You have a lot of guys like Keegan Murray, Jaden Ivey, who didn't need to necessarily come back. They would have gotten drafted, definitely helped their stock to come back. But Johnny Davis averaged about seven a game as a freshman, three-star guy, not very highly touted, but he came back and he improved his game a lot, showed what he's got on both sides of the ball and rebounding in, in a lot of departments. And he's averaging now 20, almost, I mean, over 20 points a game in the National Player of the Year conversation uh, on a Wisconsin team that, you know, he doesn't get a lot of help offensively, but he's doing a lot and he, he's really, you know, pushing this team to where he'd, a strong run in March and when you look at his traits he's he's got all sorts of uh, great things to him 6'5 almost 200 pounds he's not you know the greatest athlete I think people knock his athleticism more than it really deserves he's still a good athlete you see some burst enough burst for sure and a lot of different things but he's a very high IQ player that's his really his trait and he's very skilled that's that we'll see as well but his IQ you see it show up in all sorts of facets of his game and that's what really propels him forward and where you see this number one is in his mid-range he is a absolutely fabulous mid-range shooter phenomenal deadly lethal I mean pick, pick your word <laughs> he is he is fantastic in that in that place he he works off pick and roll situations so well even just isolations or coming off of screens or whatever Wisconsin runs a lot of a lot of set plays which is somewhat the knock on him a little bit I think again a little overblown I think he still shows enough in isolations and creating himself when it's not just a set play obviously attacking closeouts it's always easier than just you know being handed the ball but in today's NBA we see a lot more of that than we used to and we see a lot of motion a lot of passing and so on but when you see him just get the ball, you see just raw ability to score it. So over here, we see him there coming to where that wing play being guarded by Jaden Ivey. Right here, he's about to get the ball, and he's being guarded by Ivey. And just watch him, right? Gets the ball, and just the quick, quick step, and gets to that baseline. Ready? It's a ball. Go. And step back, and shoot. And when you watch a shot, it's... Uh, he doesn't need he creates a good amount of space here but you'll see a lot of plays where he does not need a lot of space very little space but he elevates over you so well and you see the beginnings right here right little crossover step has a good amount of space and just watch how high he elevates right that ball's getting there and even with a good contest against you know probably the best athlete in this draft class Jaden Ivey Davis gets this ball up there and he's confident and he knows no one's going to block him so he gets it up there and that ball's falling through see it here again and like I said pick and roll so often um love here is he, he rejects the screen so often when he feels the defender's kind of out of place and you watch here right the crossover go and like I said non elite athlete doesn't have the greatest first step I think has again more burst than people realize but he's not the great he's not the best athlete but he makes up for that by just understanding and feeling a defender's building those creases and angles but here you see right Houston defense yeah Houston defender sticks with him um and so Ivy gets almost stuck into that mid-range area but he just goes to this difficult one-legged Dirk Nowitzki type shot and again watch the elevation on him and we'll go back and watch that in full speed but the degree of difficulty on a shot like that should not be understated. It, it, it's looking so much easier when we watch, you know, the Dwayne Wades and DeMar DeRozans and Jimmy Butler's, you know, light it up from the mid-range. But it is difficult. Very, very difficult. Um, so, again, got the ball here. Crosses over. Goes full speed. Feels out the second defender, right? The help defender over here. He feels him out, so he kind of stops and goes back. So, again, watch that. Step and go. Again, the degree of difficulty is outstanding. And this one, right, comes off that pick. And another thing that he does really well, he has an, a very good pace to his game. You see the change of pace dribbles, and you see him kind of slow down, speed up, understand and change speeds pretty well. And, again, that's just smart play. And for someone who's not a great athlete, it's just that much more of an advantage for you and, and almost a necessity to get to where you want to go. But he gets it here, pushes down. Feels out that defense, and at this point, right, he's stuck in a sense. The defender's got him in good position. Most people kind of just pass it out here. There isn't much to do, but if he feels it out and just elevates, right, there's there's just really no contest here. I mean, obviously, you contest, but you don't. He can get to that shot whenever he wants, like, like you see here. 
So here he just he gets into that area and then just pulls it up, right? Dribbles in, turn around, and go. And that's kind of the counter for him. Whenever he's kind of driving in and he gets stuck in, for lack of a better term, and he, he does it very well over smaller defenders as well, but does a very good job there. And over here, like I said, comes off a lot of set plays. Here you're going to see him kind of uh, come off this little curl cut and come into the paint in the free throw line area. He's over there right now. Brad Davison's got the ball. So Davis rolls off and stop and pop. And the reason that's so great is it's, again, the feel and the IQ. These are just instinctual things that you're trying to um, build off of. Can't teach this so well. You, you just kind of feel it, right? As a guy, even though you've got your defender... Uh, beaten so many guys with with especially with his level of talent will be like okay let me just drive it straight to the rim and even when there's a shot blocker there I will go into his chest and try to score but Davis feels out even with the defender on him he knows he's, he's got that start stop and he as he takes that step into that free throw line stops right here and he knows defenders flying by and he gets to that that shot effortlessly and watch the elevation and watch the defender as there's there's no there's no contest here absolutely none and if you can hit that if you have the skill to hit that again difficult shot then you go to that constantly and Davis shoots you know a good 45 percent pretty solid for the type of shots he's taking for the situation he's kind of in but he does not I wouldn't say struggle from three-point range I think he's a better shooter because you've seen percentages and numbers and you see a good stroke and good decisions from that three-point range shoots only 33 percent just shoots over three attempts a game I don't know exactly why Efficiency could obviously improve there, but he's shown good range for sure, and he he's he can show he's shown a little bit, bit of the step backs and side steps, but for the most part, it's uh, catch and shoot spot up looks, which is great because you see him and how he can work off of that and get into the mid range like we saw with the last couple of clips. But again, good good mechanics gets that ball up really high like he does right here, and it looks like this right his feet are not exactly pointed to where the basket, which is okay because. Again, ball gets up pretty high. Obviously, there's no contest here, but it, it's it looks like it looks like this that he takes. And again, I think, especially as he gets the NBA and he gets more and more looks like this, where he doesn't have to create as much, his percentage will probably go up. Efficiency efficiency will go up. But he certainly got that three point stroke, three level scorer for sure. And with three levels, you get a guy who can get to the rim, make moves, and attack. Again, not the quickest first step, but operates really well. In uh, with this pace, operates really well in the pick and rolls, and he's got a lot of great traits as a guy uh, attacking the rim. Again, not great handles, crazy handles either, but he's got a very solid handle on the ball, doesn't turn the ball over too much, um, smart with it, and here again, simple, subtle, right? I mean, he's dribbling to the right, picks coming slowly, but crosses over, and he's got that angle, right? And this is what I talk about with the burst. He's got seemingly enough of it. Um, from that stand still, go. And then all of a sudden he's going downhill, slices to the defense, and scores. He can shoot. He can hit it with either hand. Um, he's got great power. When he gets there, can lower shoulder, create space, create an angle, and definitely score at those spots. And again, one more time. He, he just seems to reject the screen almost every time, right? As a defender is going over the screen, and he sees that help defender on the right side already. That's, that's kind of your MO, right? The foot's going toward Johnny Davis's left. That help defender um, is, is on the right, obviously ready to hedge and pick up. So Davis realizes, let me cross over and go to the right. Goes to that right, attacks, and then over there. You see that body control, a lot of those traits, uh, finishes through contact well, and he has phenomenal touch. And then over here. I love this because this is just so subtle but so effective. Watch the defender on Johnny Davis right now. Watch as the pick is coming. Watch him subtly just step over to that side. Very small, right? But as that's happening, Davis feels that, right? This is not something you're not looking at his feet, trying to see where he's looking, where his feet are pointed. Johnny Davis just feels that, and he just starts driving straight to the middle. And over there, essentially, it's easy what he does he's so smart he feels that out instinctually feel for the game iq very high iq player and over here 
Uh, a lot was made of Johnny Davis passing to begin the year. I think it's gotten much better, much improved. He is not an elite passer, but I think he's got very good vision, very solid vision, and very good instincts. And to begin, it was kind of a lot more, you know, just driving kicks and, you know, dr- little drop-offs, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's pretty good for a guy who's not a point guard, you know. Obviously, for any player, you want someone who's a great passer right as good a passer as possible but for someone who's not a combo guard who's not a point guard who's just a wing if you as a, who's a scoring guard if they can at least make the right read when they get doubled and find you on know, the driving kicks find the little drop offs find the simple passes that um because the defense is over rotated great but he's shown a little bit more but watch this right Jaden ivy again defending johnny davis and watch the ball in the aisle right Ivy's on him. But this is what I love. The IQ and understanding once again. Okay, this guy's ball denial, over pursuing, just step. Very subtle. And because of that, he gets the ball. And all of a sudden, you're in a two and two on one. The one being Trey Van Williams, the Purdue big man. And Davis just takes it full steam ahead. And levers up. Williams jumps up. And then Davis just dumps off to his big man, right? Easy. Little drop offs. And this one's a little better. Uh, better in the sense, a little more than just a simple drop off. So it gets the ball in transition, uh, grabs it up, and then you're going to see number five, Tyler Wall. He's yeah, you're gonna see Wall over there against. Obviously, this is an unset defense, and Patrick McCaffrey this is the defender we're isolating. He is going to get a little confused and a little messed with his matchups. And Davis feels that and just passes it over. And it's great because when you watch Davis's eyes, right, looking over, McCaffrey, McCaffrey turns his head, steps one too far, and this is just a feel thing, right? Again, you're not, you're not, as a passer, you just kind of feel, okay, there's a angle here and a guy's cutting. And so, right, loses his head. And this is just perfectly pinpointed while Davis is looking him off almost. Right? And throws it into a perfect position, perfectly on point, where the guy where the big man could catch it and just go straight up. And Johnny Davis does, you know, a lot of things as a guard, but at six five, he 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 has a very good post up game. We're seeing a lot more of this time and time again, you know, with like Jalen Brunson and Villanova. We see it now with Colin Gillespie and you know, those Villanova guards, obviously, Westbrook. So a bunch of guys who or guards, but post stuff, and it's really advantageous because a lot of times you're you're getting mismatches, or you're just kind of putting a guy who's a lot more athletic and a lot and has and usually can make more better decisions than a big man and move better, ball handle better, and all sorts of advantages. And you're putting him down in that spot where he becomes that much more dangerous. Um, and so Davis is going to see him roll down, get that ball here, and right now he's got a major mismatch on Isaiah Thompson, number eleven for Purdue. So Isaiah Thompson kind of you know plays it right. He fronts it, and um, he's going to get help from his big man, right? Trayvon Williams, number fifty. Um, you're going to see him come down and cut off that baseline. And Thompson's playing it right, like right is playing it correctly. Like I said, ball's being fronted. Or sorry, excuse me, the post is being fronted, and the ball comes down into that spot. And your first instinct, if you're Johnny Davis as a guy, as you get the ball over, is okay. Let me drive straight to the rim. But as soon as he takes it and grabs that first dribble, sees Williams right there. What I love is he doesn't just go into that and, you know, try to go right into contact, possibly get defended. He takes a step in and then takes a step out, right? But he remember, he's not trying to lose that mismatch. So what does he do? He steps out. And as he does that, he starts looking back into that middle. So as a Purdue defense that's rotated, number 23, Jaden Ivey, one more time, has rotated down onto 22, um, Crowell for Wisconsin because Trayvon Williams has come and helped on Johnny Davis. So what does that do? It leaves Chucky Hepburn wide open right now. So as Davis kind of turns his head back, Purdue's defense, Jaden Ivey, Ivey specifically has to rotate back onto Hepburn. And right now you isolate that matchup again, right? Johnny Davis has a mismatch on Isaiah Thompson. And Trayvon Williams, as much as he wants to help, at this point, if he tries to, he's leaving Crowell wide open, and if Ivy's on Crowell, then you know Hepburn's open. You got all these sorts of things. So, what what Davis does so well is he keeps pushing that matchup, but he doesn't push it to where the baseline, to where the basket directly, because he's just going to come right into the arms of um, 
Trayvon Williams. So he keeps backing him down more toward that paint, right? And as he does that, Ivy has to start slipping back towards Hepburn. Williams has to get back toward Crowell, and it opens up the little, not lane, but it opens up just a ability, or it opens up the, you know, the space for Davis to just pull up and elevate. We saw with some of those earlier clips how well he can just elevate over defenders, right? Watch him here, a couple steps, step, and over there. He's just, he's that much more taller and that much more skilled to pull that jumper off and score. And you watch how he contorts his body. I mean, you see him constantly, his ability to contort his body, right? Move left to right, off balance is just phenomenal and scores. And it's it's not just, it's twofold. He, he's got the ability to score from there, from that mid-range, but he's also a much improved passer and does it very well. One more time, same thing, gets the ball down here. And because of his passing, excuse me, because of his scoring ability, this Purdue defense, any defense, is going to be locked in on him. Eyes are going to get lost. So, as soon as Davis gets that ball there, number zero, Mason Gillis, is going to come down just for a second. And Davis's first instinct is not just... Let me go. It, as any you know, post player should be doing is looking into the middle, seeing if there's cutters, seeing if the defense is coming, because that's where the help is going to come from, the weak side. And Davis does that, right? He looks there, and the guy who just gave him the post entry, 14 for Wisconsin, is going to be heading toward that opposite wing. So as what Davis does so well here is he looks the eyes. So for, first, let's rewind for a second. Let's just look at the play full, full and full. So it gets the ball here. Looking toward the middle, and that's an easy basket, right? Okay. Now, Davis gets that ball, right? And look where he's looking. He's looking, his eyes are this way, right? Toward where those shooters are going to be. So, what Gillis and Jaden Ivey have to do is, you know, maintain, is, you know, kind of rotate back to their guys because if they don't, then. You get wide open shooters, and they're they're you know Jaden Ivy who's right here in that middle is more inclined to leave that big man who's cutting in because he believes that Travion Williams number fifty is going to rotate back and stick on that right. So you watch Ivy, he's already banking back to where there, and it's Travion Williams right here. Fifty right, Williams, Williams right here, he gets he gets lost because he's not only looking at the eyes he's just worried about the scoring ability and that's why defenders fall asleep and it's twofold right it's one is that scoring ability so williams falls asleep two he's looking toward that uh toward those shooters and as gillis fights back as ivy fights back excuse me as gillis and ivy fall fight back uh williams just completely is just looking at uh johnny davis and you got that great little pass out of the post to a wide open guy. And that's how those things develop. It's very smart. And like I said, he's got they, they run a lot of set plays, Wisconsin does. But he's also got great instincts to just move without the ball. A lot of times you see it subtly just moving, uh shifting on the perimeter, getting to open spots, moving when you know the ball gets to his place, just simple little high IQ things. But over here you see this. This is not even a you know so I played his ball goes into the middle, and Johnny Davis, as his defender falls asleep, all right, as soon as that ball goes in, one of the smartest things to do in basketball is if your defender turns his head, as his has, there's a wide open spot right there, and so Johnny Davis, you know, runs right in, gets that basket, easy, just subtle. And over here, um, again, a lot of concern around his speed, and yes, he is not an elite elite athlete, but I still think he's a good one, a very good one even. But he's just got you know some of his acceleration traits that kind of step off. So you see Johnny Davis here, and as soon as the steal is made, just watch him take off. Just watch Davis, right? Goes, and then you watch speed, right? He's just bursting out, and then little nice little sidestep, scores through and through. And Johnny Davis is probably one of the better guard rebounders in the Big Ten. 8.3 rebounds a game. Average is 1.5 offensive rebounds a game, which is a pretty impressive number considering he's on the perimeter most of the time. But what you love here is his his motor and his 
um, tenacity to continue crashing the glass, which he does most of the time. There are some some aspects we see in ball watch just a little bit, and maybe it's a trust of, okay, my big men are there, and I'm a perimeter player, but you'd like to see him box out a little bit better. A lot of times, like I said, he's just ball watching, but over here you see him over there on that wing, and as soon as that ball goes up, just puts a couple of hands, and you see him there, right? So I'm saying underrated vertical. You see him get up there, catch that ball, snatch it. He's got very good length, and you see him use that length in all aspects of his game. On offense, on defense, you'll see it, and rebounding, of course. And Johnny Davis has been, I think, a very good defender since he came in the league. Pretty good lateral quickness, used good length, but he's just got great instincts on when to contest things, when to um, you know, grab for steals, and his recovery speed. I think it all just comes instinctually. Just watch him stick one-on-one -on -one here, right? Keeps his feet sliding and contests it well. Grabs that. But this is what I'm talking about really much, right? You got Davis up there, right? As he's sticking, watch him slide through. And even if he gets beat just, you know, half an inch off, half a foot off, he's just got such good instincts, even one-on-one, -on -one, just when to contest. You see him here, and I don't think he blocks that ball per se, but he has a hand in there. He probably would have had um, Tyler Wall not slid in over. But you see it here, and you block him down, and watch him save that ball also. Great hustle plays. I mean, he came in as a three-star recruit and a guy who's, you know, and usually don't have that high of a pedigree. A lot of times you see guys who are, you know, like that hustle hustle players who are going to make those dirty plays. Um, but uh, you love that as part of his defense. He plays great defense. Two-way player for sure. Like I said, that rebounding, passing, scoring gives you a lot of different aspects. And he's also a very good help side, weak side defender understands team concepts moves switches really well and over here this is a little more subtle but you see him there defending his guy in the corner just steps in and snatches that ball away like i said great instincts on when to um go in you know defend block but again blocks are more on like the clip like we saw last time not a rim protector obviously but he, 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 even his recovery speed, even when he gets beat, you know, a foot off or half a foot off, he has such great instincts there. You see him here with the steel, moves really well, communicates, understands team defense. He's very fundamentally sound in that aspect. And so I think you, it's, it's kind of, you see why NBA teams love Johnny Davis. There's so much there with him, even with, you know, slight athleticism concerns. I think there's just so much skill. And even, and I think he's a guy where when he comes in the league, even if he's not, you know, a superstar who's um, who's a ball dominant shot creator from day one, he's got a good potential to be, you know, three and D guy. And especially as his efficiency efficiency will go up, he can play defense and give you different aspects. And it's going to continue to tighten up as he kind of learns different ways to navigate through the NBA. But overall, I, I definitely see, you know, star potential. Um, that athleticism. I don't think is going to wear him down as much as people think. And I think he's going to be a very good player in the NBA. And there's a reason he's being talked about as a top five pick, top 10 for sure. Uh, we'll see where he is as the months go on. But it's it's time to really get excited about Johnny Davis because he is a great player. But that's been the whole wrap-up on Johnny Davis. Um, the full scouting report on Johnny Davis will be at dbl-coverage.com. Be sure to check that out on him and many other players. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day.